we got these three yarns of different weight. We got a screwdriver and sell tape and a marker and stuff. And we'll get to what this is for in a minute. But essentially what we're trying to figure out is uh, how to determine a yarn's weight. So traditionally, you'd see something referred to as a ply. And what a ply means is the strands that make up the entirety of the yarn. So if we take a look at this yarn and just break it apart, you can see it's made up of smaller bits of yarn. And in this one, we have six. So in that sense, it's a six ply. And you would think that this slightly thicker yarn would have more plies. So it would be like an eight ply. But if we actually look at it and break it apart here into the smaller strands, you notice there's only four here. So that method of determining the weight by counting the strands isn't going to work here. And, you know, if you look at this even thicker yarn, oh, disgusting acrylic yarn I feel bad even touching it so let's uh just look at this you know it's made up of even less strands so ply just doesn't really apply you, you can't determine a weight it's only got three strands in here so we're gonna have to employ some other mathematical method we're gonna use measurement uh one inch to be exact or 2.5 centimeters and the way we're gonna measure the yarn is how many wraps can we fit into one inch so we got our screwdriver here right and what we want to do is section off one inch of the screwdriver and we're going to do that by uh, trying to measure it here and we're going to find what 2.5 centimeters is and somewhere around there and we're going to try to be as exact as possible so I'm going to grab this marker here. It's too thick for the job, but we're going to try to mark that one inch. You know, just spam it here and see if we can mark it off so we can have an idea. You know, we can always double check later. So yeah, that should be good enough. And let's see, measuring here, it is okay so we're a little bit over so anyway that gives us an idea of where to place the sellotape to section off that area if this doesn't make sense it will in a second so just what you want to do is you grab your transparent tape boxing tape duct tape it doesn't matter all you really want to do is just wrap it around your screwdriver or other object like a pencil or Whatever, I just choose a screwdriver because like you can do this to a screwdriver and without compromising its original application, you can still use a screwdriver to screw screws, even if it's got sellotape on it. So what we're doing here is uh, wrapping the tape around on top of itself. You don't want it to veer off to the left or right and kind of make a slope. You want to construct a very straight, flat edge, like a ridge that is a very visible marker to one inch. So from the handle to the ridge is one inch. That's the whole concept. So be as careful as you can, as meticulous as possible, and just keep wrapping that tape on top of itself until it creates a satisfactory ridge. And that should about do it. It doesn't have to be too massive. It's just a marker to show where one inch is. So let's grab our first yarn here. Um, and what we want to do is just start wrapping it around the screwdriver. And it would be nice to be able to twirl it like this, but it's kind of hard to keep the tail on. So you just kind of got to wrap it around. So I would have benefited from using a shorter screwdriver. This would have been less of a pain. But yeah, we'll get, we'll get the job done here. So you're going to wrap it around and count each wrap while you're doing it or just at the end. So be very careful not to wrap, uh, put the wraps on top of each other to stack them. You need to make sure that they're not overlapping, that they're just side by side. And there we are kind of at the end, I think. So that's 14. That seems about right. 
I'll have to look at the the documentation to see if that corresponds, but yeah, 14 is the number we have right now, just from, you know, applying tape and then wrapping the yarn around a screwdriver, we got the number 14. So that's our first, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's 14. So that's our first uh, data point, so to speak. So let's move on to this yarn, which, um, According to the documentation, like the first and second yarn here are made by two different producers, but they both claim to have the same weight, the same gauge, but clearly this one is a little bit thicker. So that's kind of why this uh, method or this kind of verification is necessary because there's no law or uh, standard that uh, yarn producers need to adhere to they can just call their yarn whatever they want so you, it's up to you to to verify it to make sure that it's the right thickness for your project so you don't end up with something that's too small or too big so yeah see this one's 12 so already we've uncovered a, a complication there within the documentation we need to create our own uh, data sets to verify that things are in fact what they should be. So here we have a very bulky piece of yarn. Uh, it's uh, gifted to, to Bird by one of her friends. Uh, it's 100% acrylic and uh, it's never going to be used for anything other than this. So here we see, yeah, that's eight wraps. So that's way too thick to use on 3.5 needles. So we'll never see that yarn again. But that's pretty much it, the poor man's method of determining wraps per inch with a screwdriver. If you want to make a nicer tool, here's a video on how to make one out of wood. So let's look at the issues with this technique. If we go to Wikipedia's yarn weight page and focus in on a data point, 5 ply equals 12 to 18 wraps per inch. That's a 50% margin of error. Huge. If you look at another data set, sports yarn 5 ply is 12 wraps per inch. That's one point. Here's another one confirming 12 wraps per inch for a five ply. But here we have a conflicting data set. It says 14 wraps. So that's two extra, right? Look at one more data set. Ravelry, which is a very trusted page, says that five ply is 12 wraps per inch. So if we go to Ravelry, look up some yarn we have. This one says it's 12 wraps per inch. So let's verify that. So we got our fancy stick. This is a five ply yarn. So now we're gonna try to get it to be 12 wraps per inch, which is a horrible science. This is not the way to do it, but we're gonna force the data to confirm our hypothesis. That's makes me feel bad inside, but just get it over with. So that's 12, right? So you can see they're pretty spaced out. Like we could probably fit more wraps on here. So if we dial this back now, yeah, it's 12, definitely 12. So if we dial this back now and try to compress the wraps and see how small or short we can make 12 wraps actually be. So if I just, without overlapping the yarn, just put it as tightly together as humanly possible. So I'm pulling it very tightly, stretching it out and compressing it back in on itself like that, right? So there's no breathing space between the wraps. Okay, there. That is 12. So you can see we could probably fit another six or seven on there. So that's the problem. The only way I can see of solving this, you know, we have all this data out there already saying sort of similar things. Like this yarn is a five ply yarn and should be 12 wraps per inch. So what we need to do 
in order for this method to make any sense is we need to space it space the yarn slightly just like this just a little bit of breathing room between the wraps and then it will come out to 12. so if you do that when you're measuring uh, your yarn weight or the wraps per inch just space it out a little the method's going to work that's clearly not ideal but it's the best we have right now <laughs>